Hello, Michael Voris here, and I'd like to invite you to please check out our website at churchmilton.com. There you'll get so much more than just the Vortex. If you're Catholic, you need to know your faith, and we at churchmilton.com want to help you learn everything you can possibly absorb in your brain about the infinite beauties of the Catholic faith. If you're not Catholic, we ask that you open your mind to what our blessed Lord has to offer through his Holy Catholic Church. I'd like to invite you to visit churchmilton.com to learn as much as you can about what it means to be an authentic Catholic. Enjoy today's episode of The Vortex, and we'll see you at churchmilton.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris. Did you hear about the four Catholic priests who attended the Trump rally in Montana right after the 4th of July? My gosh, the temerity of them, the gall. Priests having the chutzpah to go out in public actually dressed as priests, inflicting pain and agony on millions and millions of leftist Catholics and their allied bishops and chancery staffs, especially in Montana, where diocesan personnel have had to actually work. And yes, they're hopping mad about that. These four priests, Father Chris Lebsock and Kevin Christofferson, are from the Diocese of Helena, where there is currently no bishop, and they have caused no end of pain and sorrow for the current administrator, Monsignor Kevin O'Neill, who reports suggest is despondent over priests being pro-life and has made inquiries about counseling to ease his PTSD, Priest Traumatic Stress Disorder. The other two priests are Fathers Garrett Nelson and Ryan Erlenbush from the Diocese of Great Falls, Billings. Bishop Warfel is the bishop there, and his priests have brought him immense pain and suffering. Great spiritual turmoil for showing up at a Trump event. My gosh, he even had to respond. Imagine, the fundraising efforts had to be put on hold so he could rush back to the chancery and throw his priest under the bus publicly. As a quick aside, Father Ryan Erlenbush is the same priest Church Milton reported on not too long ago who made a stink about an openly and well-known sodomite couple being the MCs at a Billings Catholic School fundraiser. Father Erlenbush is rumored to be a secret hater, but we've been able to, unable to confirm that. Now, what happened was this. These four anti-abortion, baby-loving, orthodox-preaching, toxic masculinity oozing clerics got invited to the rally, and when they arrived, a nice Catholic lady they know who was in charge of seating, taking people to their seats, said, oh, hey, fathers, look at this, and she escorted them to center stage so they could be close to President Trump. You know, the bigoted, slimeball, not-so-secret Nazi whom the U.S. bishops loathe and have decried and declared is absolutely unacceptable, unlike St. Barack, who gave them hundreds of millions of dollars and whom they adored. Trump, in his usual bombastic style, had the unmitigated gall to be outraged that MS-13 gang members were jumping the border and killing Americans something the Democrats support. The bishops and the Democrats agree, they're kind of sort of the same thing, we know, we must abolish ICE. So when he made a comment about making sure we keep them out, the media reported, again, that he attacked all immigrants, and when the four renegade priests cheered Trump, they were vilified for being immigrant haters, which of course they are. All political conservatives and Orthodox Catholics hate immigrants. It's even a box you have to check on the application to become an Orthodox Catholic. If you don't check the box, then they don't let you into the All Are Welcome Club. I mean, my mom was an immigrant, so of course I hated her. Christine Niles and Simon Rafe here at Church Militant, well, they're immigrants also, so we hate them. Immigrants, go home. And of course, the four toxic snowflake-triggering priests, they're haters too. Shortly after this sordid affair and shameful display of politicking, unconfirmed reports are suggesting the priests stayed behind after the rally for three straight days without food, sleep, or water, quietly registering anyone they could to vote Republican, and even added the names of some dead people. They each used to be Democrats, and of course, old habits die hard. And after all that, the intellectually lazy loons over at the pathetic Pathios website got hold of the story lied and misreported what actually happened, and urged their equally low IQ readership to contact the priest's bosses, and well, all hell broke loose. 
The official establishment chancery rats ran along with the bishop and they had to be hospitalized, insider told us. Insiders told us because after suffering concussions, after slamming into each other in the hallway, running around to put out the fire of a story, that priests actually supported life in the womb. What are we coming to? So outrageous are these priests' actions that the nice people over at the Montana Antifa actually posted pics of them on the group's Facebook page. Of course, this well-deserved and implied threat to their safety has not been condemned by the bishop or the chancery because, well, the priests deserve to be targeted for their evil participation in an evil Trump rally. You can only imagine the disgrace and fear that gripped the chancery of both dioceses that day as reports that Cardinal Supich had to cancel his next pro-sodomy speech and actually call and demand that these pugnacious priests be disciplined instantly. The outrage even reached all the way up to the USCCB where the likes of Cardinal Dolan and Cardinal Whirl, fresh off having to admit that their buddy Cardinal Theodore McCarrick was and is an active sodomite and child predator, they had to interrupt their dinners and declare that mere priests are never allowed to hobnob with politicians in public and certainly not wearing their clerical garb. That right is reserved to cardinals and bishops like themselves who have demonstrated the approved technique literally hundreds of times, as we can see here. The politicians must be those with whom we can say repeatedly and repeatedly that we will dialogue with them about child murder and men having sex with men. Oops, sorry, reminences. I know that one might be a bit too close to home for you. The right to hobnob and appear in public with child murdering politicians was even granted to insignificant Monsignors from time to time, as we see here with Monsignor Kevin O'Neill from the Helena Diocese, who has ripped into these priests for the gall they demonstrated to show up at a conservative Politico rally. This picture should have been enough for the four of them to realize immediately, realize instantly, that Catholic clergy can only be in photos in their clerics with nice, polite, child-killing politicians like O'Neill did here at the 2013 inauguration of Montana Governor Steve Bullock, who has never met a fetus he wouldn't shred to pieces for a few votes. In fact, the upstart priests all need to understand that the only way they could ever pose for pictures like Monsignor O'Neill is with Catholic pro-abort politicians who give money to the diocese so they can curry favor with money-grubbing clergy and be admitted to Holy Communion, just like Catholic Governor Steve Bullock. He pays and then plays like he's Catholic. And of course, Monsignor O'Neill looks the other way and the other way and the other way and appears in pictures with him and takes money from him. It's not that hard, Father. Sheesh, can't you figure out how to do this yet? You have tons of examples who keep trying to teach you by their example. Take their money, let them go to hell, and snap a selfie along the way. See, it's not that hard. Why, why, why did you do this? How dare these upstart priests assume they could go to the rally of a U.S. president who didn't support abortion? The seminary failed miserably with these men, quite obviously. I mean, how can you get any dialogue going unless the politician you're glad-handing and asking to fill your coffers with social justice money by the billions actually wants to kill children. What a boring conversation it would be if he actually supported life in the womb. Wouldn't be a need for dialogue at all now, but would there be? And hey, if there isn't years and years and years of endless go-nowhere dialogue, well, then what's the point of the hierarchy? So you can understand why these priests had to be publicly humiliated by their respective dioceses. It makes sense. They should probably be defrocked, in fact, for their horribly politically incorrect and therefore mortally sinful behavior. The new code of canon law that Father James Martin is putting together says that any cleric who does not support political correctness must be censored. A second offense means he's gone. Why do people hate migrants and refugees? And judging from the official statement from the Helena Diocese, which was at first incorrect, and had to be taken down to reflect the facts without hysteria and the constant ramblings on their official website, which got taken down and put back up and amended, and then taken down and put back up and then taken down again. It appears this act of being a Trump supporter, heck, even being in a photo with him, while also being a cleric, well, that's just a bridge too far. 
Some members of the Curia in Rome are reportedly infuriated both at the news itself and the fact that they have to take valuable time away from covering up the misappropriation of tens of millions of dollars, as well as drug-fueled gay orgies, and now spend time devoting it to this crisis. My goodness. All because these priests actually believe. It's disgusting. Standing there in their Roman collars, imposing their beliefs on the rest of the <clears throat> pluralistic society, as the Diocese of Helena pointed out, and turning America into a Trumpian theocracy where people who don't work actually don't get paid, imagine that, and people who cross borders illegally and rape, maim, and kill citizens actually have to face justice. Oh, the injustice of it all. You can see why the Vatican is so, so upset about this, rightfully so. But Church Militant's investigative team has been, well, investigating and have discovered that these four renegade clerics are apparently just the tip of the iceberg. Sources tell us that all over America, hundreds of younger priests are slowly building momentum and are in secret in contact with each other, as well as hundreds of seminarians who are all planning to make the church great again, they claim, by actually preaching the authentic faith. <laughs> The plot has been going on now for quite some time, planned since the revelations that giant numbers of older priests are gay and active and have been covering for each other for decades. The case of Cardinal Theodore McCarrick molesting an altar boy and seducing dozens, dozens, of seminarians over 30 years, along with other friendly bishops joining in with the fun, has apparently inspired this clandestine clique of clergy to begin acting. Reports are they hold dangerously extremist views, views that Cardinals Supich, Tobin, Whirl, and Dolan have insisted must be stamped out. Views like the Catholic Church is the one true faith, that those in mortal sin should not receive Holy Communion, that Jesus Christ is actually present under the appearance of bread and wine. Members of the American hierarchy are aghast at such claims. And initial insider reports indicate that these claims are so outrageous, the bishops think they can't possibly be true. Cardinal Supich has actually called many of his dialogue buddies in D.C. and asked that the four priests be dragged before a congressional committee and placed under oath to ensure that they do believe not having a job is just as horrible and evil as having your skull crushed in the womb and your brain sucked out. Church Milton is working overtime and will let you know when those congressional hearings begin. Feel free to contact the respective diocese in question. Contact info is here on the page, and let them know how outraged you are, respectfully, of course. Charity and justice demand that Bishop Warfel of Great Falls Billings and Monsignor Kevin O'Neill issue an apology in public to these fine men. Perhaps you can encourage them to do so with a phone call or an email. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. Hello Militant, thank you for checking out today's Vortex. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up with all the latest that needs to be talked and known about in the Catholic world. Be sure to stay connected to everything going on by also heading to our website at churchmilton.com. We've got lots of educational and one-of-a-kind Catholic content that you won't see anywhere else. Follow all of our social media channels as well. You can find these links right below this video. We'll see you for tomorrow's Vortex. God love you.